Well, Angela Carani is trending because the Italian boxer forfeited a match in the Olympic Games against Inani, uh, Imani Khalif. She's an Algerian boxer that failed at least two biological tests, which showed that she had XY chromosomes. Now, the internet is going crazy about this, saying, oh, this is, we're ruining women's sports. This person is a male. She shouldn't been a- have been able to compete. But let's look a little bit closer at the story, because what happened was that these two went up against each other. Uh, The Italian boxer took a direct hit to the face, forfeited the match in tears, and then walked away. Now, it's true that uh, the Algerian boxer Khalif has XY chromosomes, and that means that person has biologically male chromosomes. But she was assigned birth a, a female at birth. She was raised a girl and has otherwise girl parts. So this is not a story like Leah Thomas, who went all the way through puberty as a boy, competed as a boy, is a man, decided to identify as a woman and then compete in women's sports. This is something completely different because this person was raised and identified, not she didn't identify as a girl, she was assigned girl at birth and has girl parts, but happens to also test for an XY chromosome. Now wait to ask your questions, David, because I wanna make this comparison. Well, it wasn't a question, uh, this, I just wanna, the, the person in red is who we're talking about, right? Like. Because it yes. was blue and yeah. red. Okay. Just okay. To... Yeah. So the the girl in blue that you saw crying is the Italian boxer that forfeited the match after taking a direct hit to the face. Forty six so, seconds yes. in the match. Yeah. And so the one in red is the Algerian boxer we're talking about. Now this has in fact happened before. So hold your opinion until you hear this because this is Maria Jose Martinez Patino. She was a world class hurdler who was denied participation in the World University Games in 1980 because it turned out that she too had. XY chromosomes and she also had internal testes in other words she was intersexed she didn't know this before she was tested and found out as a result of that but had an entire career competing and training as a woman was raised as a woman assigned woman at birth and then she was asked to retire she refused and she was eventually allowed to compete so people say she was a trans athlete hero she was not she was not transgender she did not identify as a woman she was a woman who found out that she had this genetic condition which gave her xy chromosomes that's an intersex body nothing to do with transgender nothing to do with what you identify with now the difference between martinez patino and calef is that kelly I think it's Khalif, has known about her XY chromosomes from previous tests and still wants to compete. It's only the fact that she's known it for longer, but the sprinter that we just talked about, the hurdler, knew it as well and wanted to compete. So what's fair here? Is it fair to an athlete for a hurdler specifically to find out that she's got this internal condition that she didn't know about and have to retire? Now, the IBA, or the International Boxing Association, released this statement about the Olympic Committee's decision to let these two athletes compete in women boxing. They said that because these two athletes have previously failed the genetic tests, they had been removed from competition in 2022 and 2023. Now, the first one, Lin Yu Ting, did appeal, did not appeal the decision, meaning that decision was legally binding. Khalif initially appealed the decision, but withdrew during the ap- appeal process. So they're saying that both bans were legally binding. They were not allowed to compete before. Uh, and they note that the decision was legally binding by the Court of Arbitration for Sport. That's the same uh, court that decided that swimmer Leah Thompson could not compete in swimming against other biological females. Now, again, this is tricky. Leah Thompson is a man, has all the man parts. Thomas, sorry, I always say this, was was a man until he was 17, I think, right? Khalif is not, was a woman raised as a girl, always thought she was a girl until she tested just like this hurdler. So again, there are two issues here. What's safe for the athletes? What's fair? to the athletes, is it fair for a girl who thought she was a girl all her life and then gets these tests to be pulled out of sports? Uh, It would be fair if it's a safety issue. Is there any information showing 
that her presence makes other people unsafe. Uh, we have to look at that. We have to look at that collectively instead of just like becoming outraged because it looks like something that we are conditioned to be outraged about, which is men and women's sports, which I am regularly outraged about. But I find this one to be a bit more nuanced, which is why I want to collectively lower the temperature and say, huh, Okay, wait, let's think about this. Uh, so for once, I don't agree with J.K. Rowling to rush to judgment on this. Here's what Rowling said. Could any picture sum up our new men's rights movement better? The smirk of a male who knows he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment, enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head and whose life ambition he's just shattered. Again, she's not a male. She's a woman who has a chromosomal condition. Uh, and so I think that we should be careful about this. So she's not, I mean, it, it, she tested, so she has the biological male chromosome. In, in, I think that it's much similar to this, the hurdler that I showed you in the beginning who didn't even know that she had this intersexed condition because had been raised, was told by her family, had all the girl parts, had boobs not put on by hormones, had a vagina presumably not surgically created, think you're a woman, train with women, and then you get these tests and you're like, oh no, I have this condition. Does that preclude you from sport? So either both of them should have been excluded or both of them should not have. So why the hurdler and not the boxer? Hmm. I, I know. I mean, I'd love to hear what our viewers think about this. I mean, and think about this as your daughter. You've always thought that this was your daughter. They're a great athlete. Oh, my gosh, they're making it here. And then you get this blood test back and you're like, oh, should they pull out? Is there any advantage they've had up till now? Again, I think it's important because I am very much against men in women's sports, but this is not a man and it has nothing to do with transgender. And we we I think we'll lose the plot of fighting for women's sports if we don't see the distinction. Mm. Don't you? What does uh, the chat say? Grover Lord in our chat says one in 30,000 people have this condition. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, back when I was on Fox News, I, I said that on the air. I, right. you know, I, I pointed that out because there are families... I mean, you know, we can have this sort of like outrage Fox News response to things, right? Uh, MSNBC response to things. Um, or we can have a more nuanced discussion about it. And you imagine being a parent and you have a, a you think it's a girl, right? She's born a girl. She's got lady parts. And then for her whole life, it's a girl. And then, and you, then you find out. Find out she's got this genetic condition. In, right. So th this is a question of, is it fair? And does it make the other women less safe? Is she, do we have that picture? Actually, that's of a her? good question. So do we know that because, all right, she thinks she's a girl her whole life. She's yeah. got lady parts, right? Can that, we pull back oh, up this picture of her while you're making that thought? The, do, the one where she's got the big white tank top on and, you know, at least we can look at her. Yeah, go ahead. So Maybe we don't have it. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So I forgot what I'm just going to say. Okay. Um, but I, I, I think the point I was going to make is, I think, um, do we know that there's any advantage? I mean, that's the that's the real question here. Is there any science or data to show that okay, because she he has this chromosome, now he has more muscle mass? I'm not comfortable calling her a he. I think she's okay, a girl. Then you you be comfortable however you want to be comfortable. I'm calling her. I'm just asking. Does because she's got this male chromosome. Mm -hmm. Does that make her more more strong? Does it allow her some advantage that we don't know about? Exactly. That is the question. And do and we have the, any data on the it? The Boxing Association said that it didn't test her for testosterone. So that should probably be done at this point if there are people feeling like it's unsafe. She doesn't look to me bigger than some of the largest female athletes. That's hardly, you know, a bellwether. But at the well, same and, time... And she has... She has lost seven fights, I think it was. Uh, I read somewhere that she had lost seven fights against other female boxers. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so, so she's not anyway. like undefeated. Right. So I don't think that we can we should confuse this with a transgender issue with transgender men in sports. This is not the same thing. Uh, and it's proof that this is maybe trickier than we would like to think. Uh, just offering it our outrage 
is kind of unproductive here. So we have to think about it. Um, but I, I think it's been clear from the segments we've done before. I don't agree with men in women's sports, men who identify in uh, to women's sports. That is a totally different thing. And I guess while we're on the subject, uh, it's been reported today that President Trump has said on the campaign trail that he will ban men in women's sports for whatever it's worth. Uh, so let me know what you think of this very nuanced story. Um, I, I appreciate this conversation. No, we have the best audience in all of uh, all of media because you guys are not dicks and you guys are you guys are having a, a nuanced conversation with us. We're just asking questions. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, would love to know it. the science on this. You in know? the locker room, this person would look just like me, have the same parts. Right. And so I would not be uncomfortable with her, with my daughter's in the locker room the same way I would with Leah Thomas, Thompson, Thomas, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> right? There a is a distinction here that I'm asking us out. to have because we're smarter than everybody else. Hey, ladies. And not medically enhanced parts, but actual real right. biological parts like you. Yes. Right. Yeah. Again, according, yeah, one in 30,000 people are born that way. So it's a good, it's a good question. It's yeah. an interesting one.